What is happening y'all? Cowboy here. Welcome back to another Code Vein build video and today we are taking a look at my Battle Mage build, Fire and Ice. Now the idea behind a Battle Mage is being able to get into combat and dealing respectable damage via your spells while still being formidable enough that you could hold your own with a sword. This build in particular does that with a focus on ice and fire elements and it does a pretty good job at it. We got some decent damage coming in from Barrage at close range. We got some decent long range damage via spikes and on top of that our sword can do some pretty insane damage when we consider the special abilities on it. So to talk about what makes a build like this work, the first thing is the blood code and that is the Skahak blood code that we get from fully restoring the vestige of the successor of the claw. Now if you fail to do this and you have Queen's Claw, the only way to gain access to this is to play through on New Game Plus, but all in all this is going to be your best bang for your buck for a playstyle like this. We have B plus Dex, we have B in both Mind and Willpower, Respectable, Vitality and Fortitude. I mean as you can see it's just a very well balanced oriented code for this style of play. Moving on into our weapons. Also from the successor of the Claw will be our first weapon, the Blazing Claw. Now this is a Fire Katana. It deals 760 damage fully leveled up with 50 fire damage on it. All in all, it's more of a uh, aesthetic choice because I wanted to keep with the fire and ice theme, but it does pretty good damage on its own. Um, as for our secondary, we have ice blood, which we've also put fortification on. So we're up at 734 with 50 ice on this. You'll notice there's no fortification on Blazing Claw. That's because of the weight here. Uh, doing fortification on Blazing Claw will actually put it into the slow category, which we don't want. You could alternatively put Devour on this, but we have a spell to help with Devour, so we're not going to really need that. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is enchanting your weapon with fire or ice. When you enchant a weapon with an element it already has, you only get a small increase. So enchanting this with fire would only put my fire up to 70 at the loss of like 140-ish damage. So it's really not worth it. Uh, on the flip side, though, if I was to put ice on this sword, I would have both 50 fire, 50 ice. But then that kind of takes away from the whole point of having a fire sword and an ice sword. Moving into our Veil, we're going to be running with a Hound's Veil, the GXL Overgear. Now you can just run the Defender, the Overgear is just an alternate color scheme to it, but I do like how this looks for this style of build. Uh, and all in all, this is just a very, very beefy Veil. We have the Mind and Deck Scaling here, uh, but more importantly, we have a respectable amount of Light Gift damage, and we have very high defenses. Kind of just scrolling through a couple of the Veils here, you can see that defenses aren't going to really stack up against this thing. Now, if you want to run a mage heavier focus, you could run with the Crimson Vestment. Uh, you will still have your normal mobility. You can see we get an extra 224 to our light gifts, but our defenses tank quite a bit, especially regarding Slash and Pierce. Uh, another alternative would be the Noble Silver. Uh, this one will actually give us quick mobility and an even bigger chunk to gift, but once again, we are taking that loss in our defensive values. And I really wanted a build that was resilient, kind of in the middle of the fray. So, moving on from there, add to our passives. First up, one-handed sword mastery, kind of a no-brainer because we're focusing on one-handed swords. Revenant's ambition. Now, this is going to be vital to make this work with this particular blood veil. As you can see, without it, we drop down to slow mobility on both of our weapons. So, if you don't have Revenant's ambition, you're going to want to run one of those lighter blood veils. And then besides that, we just go for some pretty standard passives, Health Stimulant and Stamina Stimulant, giving me a hefty increase into both of those stats to just make me even more resilient on the battlefield. Now, as for our spells, we've gone for a pretty even split of Fire and Ice. Uh, our Barrages are considered our close range option, while our Spikes are considered our long range option. We have Cloak of Winter as our singular AoE, Circulating Pulse as our melee ability, and then Hunting Feast to help with the Drain. So just to kind of show these out real fast, you can see the spikes. We're doing pretty respectable damage at 1480, and these are mainly going to be to pick off enemies that are far away, pick off guys that are trying to shoot. From distance, a barrage is very bad, but close up on a target, it's a nice hefty chunk of damage. As for circulating pulse, pretty standard ability here, just, you know, it's solid, it's fast, you can go into it. Excellent synergy with the combat style that we're going for. And then the Veil of Ice here. This is just going to be kind of an AoE oh shit button that'll hit everything around you for 3200 plus damage. Uh, besides that, as I mentioned, we have Hunting Feast on. And as opposed to going for a elemental buff, which I could use, 
Having Hunting Feast is going to ensure that I have enough drain that I'm constantly able to spam not only my spells, but my weapon abilities. And when I say weapon abilities, each of these swords has two unique abilities to it. Uh, with Ice Blood, our regular heavy attack creates a bunch of icicles. Pretty cool. The Charged Heavy, not as good. We're going to shoot out an icicle that'll hit the target. It does give it some range potential, but all in all, not really the best damage. Now, on the flip side, our Y attack for the sword will create an arc of fire. It's actually a pretty tight hitbox on that. As you can see, getting it to hit the dummy definitely requires some unique positioning. And then the charge attack for this will allow you to jump up and create a big fiery explosion. So all in all, very fun weapons to play around with. You have some nice abilities on those. You have some nice magic abilities that you're using. And it just comes together to essentially give you a build that while not as OP as say pure strength or pure mage or pure dex, you have a lot of different options. And ultimately this is what makes it uh, one of my particular favorite style of play. You know, you're able to get in and do your melee damage. You have some flashy abilities on your weapons. You have some decent spells for both long range and close range and it's just a very solid balanced approach to combat. So let's jump on down into the depths, show you what this thing is capable of. So as always, we are heading down into the Zero District to show this on off. Um, as for the partner, you can really bring anyone you want with this build. I think Mia does pretty well because she provides a drain buff, which stacks with your own drain buff, just to ensure you have just that much more drain coming in so that you can keep spamming both your weapon heavy attacks in addition to your spells but you can really wonder whoever you want with this build i think one of the best things about this build is the fact that it is very resilient in that it can do both physical damage and spell damage you have a decent amount of defense to it so really whatever support you prefer is going to work out just fine for this build you know you're not strictly better off with one over another here go into the uh, the ice explosion and then follow it up with a nice barrage <laughs> given these are just your normal enemies but obviously they're getting annihilated um, as a reminder of course this is 120 to give you an idea of at what point you should be seeing damage like this and also, as a reminder, don't stop leveling at 120. There's no reason you can't level up beyond that. In fact, I would suggest going as high as possible. takes down the fatties, so let's jump on back to the mistle and we'll go fight the main boss. Now another big thing to keep in mind with this is ideally you should be testing what something is weak against. Uh, you know, you could throw out a fire spike, throw out an ice spike, whichever hits harder, that's the element you're going to want to use. I already know that this guy's weaker to ice because I've played through this game multiple, multiple times. Keep that in mind as you're playing through. You want to use an element that your target is going to take the most damage from.
Mia's lucky I'm here to carry her ass. But anyway, that is going to wrap it up for the Battle Mage build. Um, one big thing I do want y'all to take away from this is that uh, the main source of our damage here, well not the main, but a big source is going to be our barrages, which are light scaling. And both the barrages as well as the spikes are available in every single element. So you can swap this between blood, flame, ice, or lightning and very much adapt this build per any particular situation to make sure you're using something that whatever you're fighting is weak against. So either way, guys, that's going to wrap up this one for now. Um, up next, I'm probably going to have a quality halberd style build, but I'm still kind of working out the kinks in it. So anyway, thanks for coming on by. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time with more Code Bane.